folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. Uh, 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 give it to my baby. All right, everybody, welcome to the Miles and Crawford Variety Hour. After several takes, this is podcast <laughs> trial eight. I don't even know. Okay. It's been a very Listen. long day. That crack you just heard is a long day of podcasting, people. <laughs> Seriously. This is what happens when two people who don't know what they're doing start doing just, what they don't know what they're doing. You know what, though? I'm kind of amazed at how well we've done with this little Audacity program so far. I mean, we already got ourselves a little intro music fixed. Figured out how to fade that shit out and then start recording. So, suck it, bitches. We got the shit going on. We're doing pretty well. So, what you have missed uh, in the first trial runs is an entire hour and a half of awesome hilarity, a lot of cackling, um, a lot of laughing. Yeah, because we tend to play off each other here. Uh, we address all kinds of issues, and I don't think we ever finish talking about any of them, but. I thought it was very, very well done. It was. Uh, my my, uh, my husband made a, a small appearance. Uh, we had oh, that to. Was great. That was great because uh, you know this is what we're doing in life, and uh, now we're just uh, we're podcasting out of uh, my garage. So live to you from Miles' garage. Yeah. It's so quite nice. Very quiet. I mean, you get nothing but voice here, people. Right. Your earball. Exactly. I mean, I'm not sure if you can hear my kids in the background. I hope not. I can just barely hear them. So I think we'll I be all right. Without these assholes. I mean, <laughs> wonderful listeners. Who hopefully tune in next time. <laughs> so if you're wondering what we're going to podcast about, we would like to let you know, we don't know. We're kind of just trying everything, you know. And, and after a few shows, I think that we might start inviting people on. But that's kind of out there. Um we're not even sure on a timeline, really. I think we're just trying to get things together. We're trying to test each other out. Seriously, though, I think... Recording we, one another. Right. <laughs> mm. Do I want a podcast with you? I know. Are you my buddy? Is this it? Right. I just don't know for a match, okay? Mm. Um, but w- I think next time... We'll be able to just sit down and straight up just record, and then only have to worry about editing after that. And that's going to be know? so wonderful. I know. And I knew today we wouldn't really get a whole lot of content, but... We got content. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. But we've got a format, we've got a little bit of music. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, we set up, we know how we sound recorded, so I think next time we can just bust right into it and put a solid two, three hours into it and be done. Yeah, you know? it's going to be so great. I know. I'm actually really excited. Like... You need to send me this file so I can play with it later, too. Oh, my God. It'd be so much fun. Oh, I'm going to play with this audacity. The audacity to play with audacity. What I really liked, uh, right before we had a, I don't know, technical skip and technic. Oh, man, we had so many technical glitches. Crash. <laughs> um, is that uh, let's talk about uh, our intro and about being old school. Uh, we're coming from a generation <laughs> that is being told that we suck as a generation. That we're over, we're, we don't want to work hard and... Uh, what else? Like we we think that we should get paid more than we're worth. Blah blah blah. Uh, and that we're we're we're, we're too sensitive soft. and we're soft. And uh, you know we're just talking about you know the the intro's a, a little you know old school nineties hip hop ish you know kind of hip hop ish. Uh, that's <laughs> a new word and that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and have our own terminology on this. And suck it, grammar Nazis. Uh, are we allowed to use Nazis? Is that a PC? Is that okay? Does it not uh, hurt anybody's feelings? If it does, fuck off. Um. So. <laughs> Uh, we don't need you to listen. We don't need exactly. We don't. We don't need. We're your... happy with the three people who tune in. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> and we're okay. I love with you, that. mom. <laughs> You're so wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for burning me. Um, However, I, I think that there's something that is to be said about the fact that we don't have much, but we're trying. And uh, if any of you older folks out there think that we're not. Again, you can go get yourself on a fucking canoe and take your douchebag self and go somewhere else. Because we don't need it. No. With the, this is mostly for people of a like-minded set. You know, or yeah. like mindset, I'm sorry. Uh, and I, I don't want a bunch of people listening who are going to be trolling us constantly. I don't oh, want right? to argue with people. No. I want people who can be like, yeah, in their car when they're listening to us on their way home or... At home or whatever, and be like, exactly. Yeah, 
because we get it. Uh, every single one of you are out there. You're working your butts <clears throat> off. You still can't pay your bills. Uh, you're trying to beat uh, whatever it is in your life, whether it be your own goals or you're trying to overcome addiction or just, you know, overcoming your mother coming, uh, you know, into town for a week. I, there's a <laughs> lot... <laughs> There's a lot of stress in life, people. We get it. We get it. We totally we're get it. We cover all of it all the time. And and that's our, our, our goal for the podcast is to just, uh, we will have a form at some point when we figure out what uh, people actually want us to talk about. Because what appeals best to our listeners. That's yeah. That's why we're here, even though we told a couple people you can fuck <laughs> off. I mean, you can fuck off if you're not going to support us. Yeah. If you're just going to cause pro You know, we're here to, whistle, like I said, like-minded individuals that find our stuff entertaining thoughtful thought-provoking and it's not about being in an echo chamber because me and julia uh me and uh, miss crawford over here <laughs> we uh we may not always agree uh, on the exact same things right. and that's okay because you well, know what like we're gonna debate exactly we're not dicks though like right. i totally get your point of view however this is my point of view and this it's a fluctuation yep. growing up and this is how and that's why i feel this way about that or whatever exactly it's okay to disagree with somebody as long as you're not a dick about it it's, you know we can debate an issue and still come away feel, still like no you didn't change my mind and i didn't change your mind but we had a great conversation. You gave me a lot to think about. And sometimes you will change your mind. Yeah. Sometimes it's all about how much knowledge a person has. Like exactly. When you somebody has a preconceived notion, and then you give them more knowledge, and then it changes their notion about what they thought before because they didn't have that knowledge before. Exactly. And I think that's a huge thing. And I think there's a lot of people who, like, you, you, you take like an instance in time, okay? So uh, we're coming up on Memorial Day. Right. So it has had to have been explained on several social media accounts the difference between Armed Forces Day, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, mm -hmm. how we're all, you know, it, people have not, we're talking about, it is the year 2017. We've been in war for like 300 years. Yeah, people, it's and, not new. It's not new. The fact that we still have to explain to other people what these holidays mean, right. it means that we haven't actually been knowledging ourselves. Right. At all. And that's the problem, though, you'll see that in a lot of news articles and whatever right now, is, is the education of America. It's so it bad. It really affected this last this last election, and the internet has had a huge a huge part taking in that. And I think that the the last election, um, you know, you'll you'll definitely hear our, our spouts. We are we're not a fan of um that thing uh, that's in office right now. The orange, the Cheeto. <laughs> But we don't we don't want to constantly bag on him or whatever. But he's a uh, yeah. But, he's, but we don't want to alienate people by a constant. I mean, it's almost exhausting how much negative you know how much Trump is in our face, and so we don't want people to tune in and oh, just to hear more hearing more oh. fucking Trump. But we will be dropping his name, obviously, here and there, and, and, and some of his advisors, horrible. and some of those things, and and uh, yeah, right. But like you said, it was but the uh, the education of the the last um, election. So, you know, we can talk all day long about you know the failures and, and the pros and the cons, and you know um, how everybody said you know the great thing about um, Bernie and Trump was mm -hmm. that they have at least mm -hmm. made people very more uh, understanding about what they really want, mm -hmm. about how democracy isn't working in America, or what people are are. Needing and people are getting vocalized, and we're getting um, our marches, we're getting our, our stances, we're getting our right. pickets. We're we're out there. We're we're trying to make a dent, and and they're not listening to us. Like, okay, guys, like let's not shit ourselves. They're not listening to us, no. but. What we're doing is having a profound effect on how the media is covering it. Because the media covered this election mm -hmm. like morons. Yeah, and then they gave... And, and just like uh, while... Before Trump became president-elect or before he became the main candidate for the GOP, um, a lot of people were talking about how much free press he was getting because he dominated the news cycle. There were 16 people in the beginning... That wanted to be, you know, that ran. Let's remember 16, that number. 16 people and Donald Trump beat all. I mean, these are people with political experience. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking. I'm so glad Ben Carson didn't make it. Because he, yeah, did you see the he video? is he in charge of our urban development, though. Right. Let's do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like let's treat, let's hopefully that works out really well. Um, mindset, your poorness people, is a mindset, people. I mean, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, I call myself a Democrat, but I do agree with some Republican ideas. Like uh -huh. you know, uh, as far as fiscal responsibility, 
Yeah, I do. Th- I I have some ideas on that. I don't think that there should be handouts to people who are able bodied, but we need to pay. We need to pay those people. You know, there's all kinds of little issues that wrap into a one big one, and you can't just say, "Well, this is one thing. This is why this is." Well, and that's what they did. I think when it comes down to uh, to to us, where it's a, 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 us, a us versus them situation. Yeah. Uh, what the media we feel has, or I definitely feel has spewed, is that okay? So. We talk about the division of America. Okay, the division of America didn't happen because of Barack Obama. Like, let's just put that out there. And I'm not saying that you're not all completely 100% wrong or right in that theory. Um, I'm just saying that he was not the cause of the division of America. I'm not saying that 9-11 was a division of America. Ronald Reagan's uh, a drug policy was not the division of America. The division of America can go back to, you know, when Christopher Columbus came onto this land. Right. And then... From the, it literally has spawned from us as a nation actually ever being has always been divided about who gets land, who's a rightful ownership, uh, how do we create you know the constitution to the laws, having to have amendments, right. Supreme Court, all of that is a division because there are those people who still believe that you know guns are. All of us should have the right to them, and I'm not saying that we don't. Go, gun lovers. Right. I'm so proud of you guys who know how to use guns properly. Safety with their locks and their yeah. gun cabinets. I have no problem with people owning guns for hunting, but why do you need an AR-45? You know, or... or M-16. Any kind, of, any kind of automatic weapon for hunting. And they're like, well, in case the government... Do you think that you're going to take the government on with that automatic weapon? I mean, they'll just drop a bomb or a disease on your ass. <laughs> you, you, and that's just... A, and, they, and they think that people... Uh, that who are about gun control are trying to control them. I'm not. I want you to have your gun. I want you to have your safety courses. I don't want you to own a gun if you are mentally unstable. I do not want you to own a gun if you are um, heavily medicated. I don't want you to own a gun anger. if if you have if, serious, serious anger issues. If you're a known abuser. Right. If if you there are problems with you. Please. I, I'm, if you're I'm, spontaneous and you can just pick a gun up and shoot your wife because she pissed you off you don't need to own a gun exactly and and not only that but i i understand that you know some of you guys go out there and you have like uh you're using your guns just because you like the the oh it's so feeling you know, yeah that experience and that is so great and and i, and I commend That's you for that too. but i i when you say about conceal and carry i really hope that what you are when you are on uh my state's campus at a college and you are carrying around a gun because you are in fear of your life or you want to be um, equipped in case of a terrorist attack or whatever it might be, I hope that when you have that gun in your pocket, it is small, it can only shoot maybe five bullets, and that is it. And if you can't kill somebody in five bullets, then you need to go back to an aim class. Yeah, uh, and, a shooting class. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you should be able to take... And shooters, for the most part, are either lone or a team. I mean, for the most part, it's always a lone. You're only taking out one person. You don't need a... Yeah, you, you don't. You know, and, you're, and you're, if you're just going to mowing down innocent people, whereas if you're a steady shot aiming for the brain, you know, or the head or the leg, or you're just wanting to take somebody out. Exactly, and I'm not saying that I don't... I, now, I, we come from a very small rural community. Let's be honest. I don't live in Oakland. I don't live in New York City. <clears throat> I have never lived in a very condensed, huge city where I felt like I needed to carry around a gun to kill 15 people in a single evening because those 15 people were trying to kill me. So I understand to some degree... The need for that. I, I do, exactly. Because, I mean, if you if you think about any kind of a dangerous environment where there's that element that could come in and you, you're you not safe, then yeah, you definitely should be carrying around a weapon just in case. And and anymore, that's becoming our reality. It, it is. is. You know, you Between that, 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 concerts, that, yeah. schools. I mean, there are stabbings and shootings every day. And the sad thing is the news only covers really big ones. But a mass shooting is considered... Three or more people, I believe. Correct. And if you actually go and look at online and look at the statistics, there are mass shootings every day. Yeah. We have this issue where people are just getting guns, and that's how we solve problems. And I think that has a lot to do with laziness in America. Yeah. Well, and, it, and then they're going to bring up this point, well, you know, um, 
So uh, Please don't kill. Right, it's the people who do, and, and, and I get that you, aspect. Look, we got some lazy Americans. If they didn't have a gun, do you think they'd chase somebody down with a knife and stab them? No. That shit is exhausting. It's very <laughs> hard to stab. It is. It, you have to have a, use, a lot of force. I mean, you're, whereas you can just... Just from yeah. far off, you know what I and, mean. And you're good. And and there was an instance uh, yesterday, yeah. and uh, a couple and, actually, this couple last week of, yeah, stabbings. with stabbings. And you know the the one guy who got arrested, um, he was. Uh, vocally uh, just go- going after this Muslim lady. These two guys stand up to him to protect her, and he stabs both of them and, and kills. I'm not sure if he kills one or both, but um, now here's an instance where this guy... Now, I'm glad that this guy did not own a gun, because if he had a gun on him, I don't know how he would have triggered probably not, not only just killing those two gentlemen, but killing uh, the Muslim woman that he was berating amongst anybody else that was in their vicinity. So here's a, an instance where, yes... People are still going to kill people. I right. get that. And, um, but, he, and, and it, again, though, am I happier that he stabbed them with the knife than I am glad that he had an AR-15? I, there's no human, there's no I'm way on that, a morally, like, conscious right. way that I can sit there and tell you why on a philosophical, philosophical, the, the ethical way. The amount of loss is best. And yes. There shouldn't be any amount of loss. Yeah. And, but, you know, if he had had an AR-15 or something, he could have mowed down 30 people instead of just stabbing two. And, and, for, and I feel like if we're wondering about why are these things happening, and is, is it because of the division of America, I don't necessarily... Uh, what I think is that... Eh, and I'm, I'm sure you, it's cool, guys. I'm totally wrong. But here's the thing. People are pissed because people are poor. People are uh, undereducated, underfunded, um, underfed. They're not getting a good night's rest. They are um, easily persuaded by their echo chambers. And yeah. I feel like me and you are going to do our best to not be an echo chamber to just only the people who are listening to us. Um, and if people want to chime in and at some point when we get our blog and everything else going where you guys can comment... Um, you know, we want to talk to people. Like, right. here's the thing. I want to talk to you as a hardcore um, Republican, Trump supporter, coal I'm lover. I'm going to be listening to somebody call me a snowflake and a yeah. libertard and, and, and stupid, petty. I'll tell you and, what, and, and Tommy LaHaren like, telling us that, you know, we don't know how to get jobs or keep them because she got fired on her day off. Right. <laughs> you know, seriously. And that's the thing is, is... I, I don't take serious anybody when I read comments or whatever. And I guess, you know, relying on Facebook comments, that's silly anyways. I mean, but, you know, that's where a lot of online conversations take place. Or, you know, just online conversations. But this is where trigger happening, trigger yeah. happy happenings yeah. is, I feel like, People are so quick to react from social just media. That gun up and then they do the same thing. Right down. No, yep. I'll just shoot this bitch. I'm yep. <laughs> and I don't know who she is or where she lives, but if I hit up her neighborhood, then she's going to feel less safe. Right. And she's going to understand why she should own a gun because if I can go in and possibly kill her, then maybe she should own a gun because she could defend herself. Here's the thing. I I, I don't. Uh, I've discussed this oftentimes, especially with a lot of my friends who are in the military, who always are telling me they want to take me to a gun range if I, I would have a different perspective if I knew how to shoot a gun, and that they want me to defend myself because I'm a female. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and there's all other reasons, but mm-hmm. here's the thing. I thank you guys uh, for all of the men and women who have tried to convince me of owning a gun one day, and maybe someday we will, but here's my aspect, is that I don't ever want to come into a situation where I feel like I have to kill somebody. Now, how that person kills me first? Well, that person wins. Um, good for them, I guess. But I don't, as a, as who I am as a person, now, not you, okay? I'm not talking to you people who love to do it. As a person, if I shot and killed somebody, even out of self-defense, go ahead, throw me in a fucking thing, and fucking throw away the key. I will never be... You know, be right after that. I, I will. I know who I am. I know that if I killed somebody, even out of self defense, I will never be able to rationalize it. And even if I was able to rationalize it, go back to work, go back to being a mom and a wife, I would never be right again. I don't think anybody who is a rational person and in a in a responsible gun owner could shoot somebody and be okay. 
You know what I mean? Like myself, um, in the last few years, I've been considering gun ownership, and I've actually gone. I want to get myself a little lady pistol. Mm-hmm. You know, just a little nice and pink. Man, I wanted to run my little thigh too, like oh. say something with a little CC Angelina gun. Jolie, Mrs. Smith style. By the way, we live in Ohio. We're an open carry <laughs> state, so on that <laughs> except for unless you're in your car which so I mean it's a catch 22 we're an open carry state but if you can't but you can't you can't have that I'll be right back that might be my car you talk man they had to run off um one of our cars is going off so and that was my cue sorry everybody um, what was I saying? Elevator music while I go through my head. Uh, in the last few years, though, I felt like I need a gun. And I worry about and other people and their mental stability. And protecting myself and my family. Um, you never know what's going to happen in this country. And I think it's just going to get worse. People are getting angrier. Uh, more upset, and I think that we're going to come to a division, a huge division in our country, where we're either going to split apart, or I'm just going to keep going. I'm just not real sure. Hey, welcome back, buddy. Was it your car? It was not. I think it was one of my neighbors. Okay. Okay. I was just saying that uh, you know, the reason why I wanted to buy a, a or, or consider gun ownership is people that are unhinged. You yeah. know, I'm a little worried, honestly. This country is, if you look at all the polls, decision, or um, issues, everything else, our country is almost split completely down the middle. 50% of us want health care for everybody. You know, the way we feel about things, 50% are me and mine only, and that's all that matters. You know, America first, me and mine only. I'm scared that there's going to be a civil war. I'm not worried about protecting myself from the government. Because the government, you, you can't protect yourself against the government. The government wants you dead, you're going to be dead. I mean, what, let's talk about Ruby Ridge, Waco. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, the, the government wants you, they're going to take you. But I am a little scared about these half-baked, crazy, conspiracy theorists, um, Cheeto-in-Chief supporters. I mean, hardcore ones. I've noticed that there has been, um, and thankfully, people who, now that he's in charge, that he bamboozled are like, I really, I really messed up. I shouldn't have voted for him, you know, or whatever else. That's who I'm thinking about protecting myself against. Because I'm wondering if we're not, people are getting, like you were saying, angrier, tired, we're poor. We're coming up on, I mean, we, we had a civil war before. Yeah. And I could see us being in East and West United States. Because I don't see, for the last 10 years, we haven't made any progress. We won't agree on anything. We refuse to budge. Well, and that all comes so into the people do? who we're, we're electing. And I, I'm not telling anybody who is listening how you should vote. Because I don't believe that anybody should ever have to vote outside of who they are. Now, I will tell you, I have voted Republican. I have voted Democrat. I have voted Independent. I have scaled. I have written in people. There is written in. There we are, written in people. I have no concern about a damn party. I am concerned about the people themselves and who exactly. they are and, and what their stupid. issues are. And people would ro- much rather sit there and allow the world to catch on fire because they stood proud as a Democrat or as a Republican or as a Green the Party. That, that they'll vote a uh, candidate based solely on the fact that they're pro-life and they don't agree with any of their other policies or how ruining they are for this country. It's just the fact that, like, they're a pro-life or they're gun, you know, that they're pro-gun, you know, or, yeah. or, or whatever else. That's the only reason. So you're willing to send the whole country into the trash can just so that you can keep your gun that you're worried someone's going to take away. Not to mention the Obama Second Amendment. Obama didn't take your guns. He never did. He never, <laughs> he never did. And, and not only that, but, you know, people are so obsessed with the Second Amendment and the Constitution itself, which I love, don't get me wrong, but was written in 1776. And uh, back then people carried muskets that <laughs> took, what, 13 <laughs> seconds or two minutes to reload or something. I mean, this is what, that's the problem with our Constitution is it was written 200 years ago, people. 
Is We're the only any- country. I, I, I let's 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 make a side note. Um, I want you guys to get on your Google, your Ask, your Encyclopedia, Whatever. your public library, and I want you to go find out how many other countries are still running their country based solely on the Constitution that they started two hundred plus years ago. I we w- are a very young country. A lot of yeah, Europe, you know, like uh, Germany. After World War Two, it got split up. Is it humming again? It, it has been for a little bit, okay. but it's okay. It's so low. All right. After World War Two, it was split up. The Soviets and the Allies, you know, and there was East and West Germany, and then they brought the wall down, and now it's just Germany, and it's ran by Angela Merkel, who I think is a pretty great leader. Um, and they had a lot to recover from after World War Two, you know, but they changed. You, you, I mean, and you. Greece, all these other, like, England, England has been around, I mean, England, British, the British, you know, they dominated the world for for the Eastern Hemisphere, they owned almost everything, you know, everybody had to fight for independence from England, that's how much land they owned, and their monarchy has been around for hundreds of years, but the monarchy doesn't run England, they have a parliament, they have a, you know what I mean, they have a modern system to use, but it, it's very socialist, too, you know, like, yeah. national health, health care and all that, but... Canada. Hello. Same thing. <laughs> well, and I think that it's it's one of those things where I, 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 it's, don't get me wrong. I love when people, when I try to um, make any kind of, it's, it's not even like a con American. I'm just saying like any kind of just rebuttal in general or saying, then if you don't love it here, then you should leave. Okay. First of all, moving I'm out of America. Tired of that. Yeah. I'm real, real tired, tired of, it. of it. For one, I actually love the country I live in. If I didn't love the country as much as I do, I would move. Um, I, I have talked know, and a lot of, to a lot of I people. I love the country that was, that I love, I love, what we were founded on. I'm not proud of the country that we have now. Mm-hmm. I'm very disappointed. And I would say even sometimes ashamed to be an American because of we don't practice what we preach. Like, we're all about protecting our constitution, our constitutional rights, but yet we want to deny rights to other people who our constitution is supposed to protect. Secure. Right. But you want to make, you know, and that's what bothers me. And as far as division, I think that politicians um, and, and are enjoying the shit out of this, by the way. I don't think that uh, and I don't think we're as divided as the news and the media, which are the same, obviously. I don't think we're as divided as they may uh, in a rate. Uh, let me let me let me clarify in in a racial sense. I don't think that we're divided racially. I think that government news, all that makes us think that we're... I'm, not to say that racism doesn't exist, don't get me wrong. Um, but I have tons and tons of, of friends of different colors, and I have never in my life felt that division or weirdness that everyone always talking about. You know, it just to me, it seems like they make a bigger issue out of people not getting along racially than there actually is. And so they create a divide. They say, well, black people don't like white people, and black people don't like Mexicans, and Mexicans don't like white people. I don't think that's what it is. I think they create a division amongst all of us because we're all poor. And as long as we're all fighting about, well, black people this, and white people that, and this and that, we never band together as a poor fucking class that needs to riot and take back what's ours, and which is just a living wage and a decent fucking life. Well, and that is a, a, a another great thing, is that when we do get together, right. when we are together, right. they sit there and say, you know, um, I, re- I loved it, because so, uh, I went to the Women's March in, in Washington, D.C., and it was a, a, a the, I, I oh, so awesome, regardless. I remember How pe- many minority women or, or minority uh, people that weren't the same color as you did you bump into and oh, mesh so with mesh with just fine? Yep, just just fine. I and mean, when you went, was there was there just the black women over here and the nope. Mexican women over here? And Not the at all. And the Jewish women? Nope. No, y'all got together. Yeah, there was no fucking division nope. amongst. And you. there wasn't. And not only that, but like I love seeing the commentary of like first of all, like you know where were they? Why aren't they at work? That up first of all, um, all these women. Uh, that I had personally spoken to that day were wi- working women. Right. Uh, a lot of them did this amazing thing. I want to let you know about this concept about resistance. I want to tell you that the resistance on whether you're in it or watching outside of it, whatever it might be, here's what happens. Somebody gets an idea and they pick a date. 
And then people start deciding whether or not they can afford to go to that resistance meeting, March, whatever it might be. Then they do this amazing, great thing. They put in a request off from their jobs. Yeah. These people do work. They yeah. actually that have really jobs. That pissed me off. They were like, look at all these unemployed people. Yes, that's it. And to say, the Women's March took place on a fucking Saturday. I'm sorry. Do you... Does no... Are you saying there's no more nine to five Monday through Friday jobs and people don't have fucking vacation days? Like that right? was the stupidest thing that you could have read. It really is in every March, and 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 and, and I want to tell you a, a shout out to every single person, whatever kind. <laughs> uh, Crawford over there is getting her phone blow up, but uh, I can't have a life just so everybody knows. <laughs> uh, that whatever you're a part of, when it comes down to uh, you know. Uh, kudos to you. I don't care if you couldn't make it and you can only be an online keyboard warrior right. or or if you could attend. Social justice warrior. Yeah, whatever <laughs> it might be. Kudos to you because at least you're giving a damn. And even if what you give a damn about it has absolutely everything to do with opposite of what I believe, congratulations. You are a part of your own resistance, the resistance to the resistance, whatever it might be. I'm glad that you are actually getting politically engaged. You are finally getting yourself involved into an aspect that so many of us, we didn't go to some women's march just because Trump was in office. I, there are so many women there who... Every issue. Every equal, issue. Equal pay. You know, I... I so many issues. And then they were, they started to, to beat down um, some of the speakers, and, and some of the speakers do have their own um, shady, shisey past. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Real, real quick knowledge uh, nugget here. Guess what? We all fucked up. I don't care how high and mighty, just because you never went to jail, just because you never got expelled for school, just because you didn't get knocked up before you were married, or, hey, hell, you know what? You might have done all three of them. Right. Who cares? People fucked up. People have gotten better. People change. There's it, no manual for life. It's not fair that you don't get a do-over. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, oh, sorry. Once you make a mistake, you're fucked. This person went to jail. Okay. So, yes, one of the speakers had gone to jail because she had 20 some... 20 years ago. 20 yeah, years ago. Or, yeah, whatever. She shot. She killed. Look, so... I, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yep. I know who you're talking yep. about. Yeah, and so I'm not going to sit here, and I'm not going to say either way. I am, for one, I am not her. I am not her. I had never lived her life. I did not walk in her That's shoes. Crazy. I am not here to judge. Because you know what? She never walked in my shoes. And there are some bad decisions that I have made in my life. And you know what? Fuck it. I made them. I'm cool with it. You want to sit there and you want to throw them in my face? Whatever. Because at the end of the day... I don't go to that just because Trump was in office. Would I would have gone if Hillary was? No. And it wasn't because Hillary was a woman that I wouldn't have gone. I would still be protesting if Hillary had put out any part of the fucking agenda that Trump has put out. You're damn right that I would have gone out there and I would have fucking fought tooth and nail against her. People didn't... You know, at some point, we got screwed. I'm a big person that I have to vote. I have to vote. Like, mm -hmm. I do not take that lightly. So... But again, it's I didn't want to write in a candidate because I knew I, I think that's uh, such a waste. Use your vote. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Unless you know that you know writing in your vote is going to make a difference. Yeah, but and, vote but to, we vote knew to make a difference, people. Now we couldn't. We knew we were told weeks in advance that writing in people was only going to hurt Hillary. Now I'm not her fan. Go ahead, shun me, despise me, spit on me. I was not a fan. I I just right. was not. But I voted for her because... So did I. You, because, know, uh, you know, and that's the lesser two evils type yep. situation. At least she would have kept the shit on the right track. Yep. And that's all I wanted. Now would she have gone... Stay the fucking course until... Because things are just starting to get okay. You know, yep. the economy's going up, jobs are getting better. You know what I mean? And, and, and if you think that, like, okay, well maybe Hillary would have gotten some people killed, kept up with the pedophile rings. We're talking about... I, I have read I have really much actually since uh, the inauguration of Trump have very much actually dived into the rabbit hole of conspiracies. I have, because of his thing, I have really said, you, you know, what is a mentality? What is the mentality of these right. thousands of people? And they really, 
look, I don't know what's right or wrong. I could be shown one day that Hillary Clinton really did create Pizzagate and that she really is behind all the killings of these people. And we could also find out all these other things about Donald Trump. We could find out all these things about Bernie Sanders. and about We could find out all kinds of things, okay? And if you really looked into any of our past, we could all find out really shady shit, okay? So I get it. I get the problems. I get the emails. Like, whatever it is that what people went for. Here's the thing. If Hillary put in, again, I'm all about the person. And I didn't really believe in the independent candidates that were running. I like Jill, but she was a bit much for me, okay? and oh, just, it, just a bit. I mean, and Gary, too. Oh, dude, Gary. Like, he needed some, he, he needed help. He needed some PR help. <laughs> he needed PR he was help. like, I love weed. Like, we should all smoke and we'd be a happier nation. But then he would go and, like, <laughs> do something, like, absolutely crazy. Or people who didn't know about the war in Syria. And, like, they were, I mean, let's talk about that. Eight months ago, you guys actually gave a shit about a dead kid on a beach. Yeah. You all actually gave a shit about that. Right. But now you guys don't give a shit about that anymore. Right now America you're... America first. Yep. Now you're all about the... the no, not even America first. Talking you know, about fucking Russia. Kushner. Russia. Kushner. Russia. Sessions. Oh, drug right, wars. Right. Did it. Ooh. 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 I can't take any more of the fucking news. Fuck you guys. Like, I hate you all. Like, you guys have no understanding how the fucking shit is working. You know what I want? I want a news broadcaster to sit down with the average fucking American family and talk about the real issues. Not for the sound bites. I don't want edited sound bites. I want to somebody to sit down for an entire year and talk to everybody and not just that one couple in Montana. I'm right, talking about not a, relevant to anybody and anybody can relate to. I want an entire news source completely and utterly talking to every talking talking, talking. <laughs> talking to every single family out there in America in every single state and not just taking your Republican or your Democrat. I'm talking about talking to people like they're human beings and not doing the sound bites and not doing the edits. And if somebody is cursing, okay, put a bleep. Outside of that, I don't want you to cut any of their shit out. I want to hear somebody from Idaho and Iowa and Utah and Nevada, all these other countries or other countries, states that have nothing to do with with the state of Ohio. Right. I want to hear their perspective, though, because I don't live their life. I don't know who they are. I don't know what affects them, but I want to know what affects them. I want to know where, what hurts them, what what makes them better people, what makes them trip. Like, how can we get ourselves as an undivided nation and actually understanding who your neighbor is? And, you know, Ohio and Michigan have their football war. Outside of that, though, dude, I think Ohio and Michigan have a lot in common that they need to be talking about. And I think there's a huge thing that the that we could be really good neighbors about and uh, we could be great neighbors and we could be doing a lot for each other if the two states teamed up together and helped fund each other from public education to helping uh, those in Flint, Michigan who are getting uh, evicted from their housing because they couldn't pay for their water bills. Um, uh, the, the toxic water bills. The toxic water bills that they're I, I being need, paid for. I need to pay to be poisoned. Yep. Um, and, uh, and and yes, you can be paid to be poisoned with your the vaccines and I get the anti-vaxxers and the vaccine... I, 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 I get that there's so many issues and we can't cover them all. But what I can tell you is that this right here, what we're talking about, these are the kind of podcasts that we're going to have. Like, we're going to be real honest with you. We don't really give a shit if you make $300,000 a year and you can afford to take your family on a vacation every single year. What you think I should be doing with my life, because until you actually walk in my shoes... You have no idea what it's like in my life. Yeah, you All you know is what you've read or seen or... Or what her. somebody told you yeah. that I live like. because It's like the welfare queen myth. Like, mm. oh, these people driving brand new cars and brand new TV. Let me tell you, in my life, and it's been many years now, I have lived on welfare. It is fucking awful. First of all, you don't get enough. to subs- and A lot of people don't understand that in order to get anything outside of Medicaid, you have to work. And if you don't work, you have to go to a job class every fucking day from 9 to noon and look for a job if you want those benefits. So, it's not that easy to get welfare. And you don't get very much welfare. And very few people actually get the cash assistance. If you get uh, food stamps, most of the time, what you qualify for, if you bought all your food with food stamps, it, it pays for about two and a half weeks to three weeks of food. That last, So, when you see somebody in line ahead of you, buying steaks or whatever. First of all, they might have got that shit. It's a day old about to expire and they got it on sale. Second of all, they might have budgeted that. You know, like, Mm -hmm. okay, we're going to have a nice steak dinner once a month 
But next week, guys, we're doing ramen noodles and toast for a night. You and know? so let's quit shunning people for being poor. Let's quit shunning people in general for what they do by. Now, 90% of America is fucking poor anymore. Mm-hmm. So don't look down on me, motherfucker, because I know you can't afford that car either. <laughs> exactly. Bitch, no, that- I know you're behind on your bills. Yeah, exactly, and no. I, that's the great part. Like people sit there and they stand in line. Like right. I saw somebody with an EBT card buy like first of all, you they did not. Your bills are you, buddy? You yeah, them all. You got some savings? Yeah, and not only that. Yes, there are the scavengers. There are the people. There are. There, yeah. are. there are the. But they are so. Like the, again, you took a situation in which a handful of people fucking shysted the like. Okay, I remember. I remember. What was it back in the nineteen nineties? MTV News when it was like legit actual news. MTV News was used to actually be a good source. I loved it. You Kurt. Oh, Loder do news. a Kurt Loader fucking Kennedy like. Uh, <laughs> When they did, oh man, MTV, man, you guys had such a, you have such a soft what spot. What happened, guys? What happened? You, you know, I don't think they could bring it back. Though we've moved forward. Yeah. You know, people don't really need to go to MTV. And you know, we didn't have the internet when we had the internet. But, but yeah, but they yeah, did an, a, an episode with yeah. uh, uh, old dirty bastard. Yeah. And he had a limousine with them kids picking up a welfare check. That bitch. Now he knew how to rob the system, right. and he taught other people how to rob the system. And right. that's look. I'm not mad about it. First of all, we all know the government is fucking but us. Now, but to have done that, yeah. that just gave everybody the impression that that's what people on welfare do. That's what black people on welfare do. Right. That is what... That is what and, and that's what you always hear when you hear people talk about uh, welfare queens. It's always a picture of a black woman. First of and, all, and I want to let you guys know we had Octomom. So let's put that out there in the universe. Fourteen fucking kids collecting it, collecting benefits. For now all that of them. woman, like I get that she needed to quote unquote stay at home because uh, the pro lifers believe that you know producing life is uh, the best. There's nothing against pro life. Here's the thing: you can actually be pro life and pro choice. I'm putting that out there in the universe, just so y'all know. There's actually like a fine, like happy medium. There is a huge there difference is. between pro life and pro birth. Mm-hmm. You're pro life, but you here's and I know we've had this conversation before. Is you want to make sure that that baby's born? You want to force a woman to give birth to a baby that she, she doesn't want, nobody else wants, and is gonna end up in an orphanage or in a foster home and, and maybe never find a home because she was drug addicted and nobody wants an imperfect baby. I think we talked about yep. that before. We, we did. Recorded. We talked. Yep. And everybody wants a perfect little white baby and that's all they want. You know? Yep. Something with no problems, or, no or disabilities. no cute little black baby from Cambodia. Yeah. Let's take, and here I guess is my America first. Let's take care of our own fucking kids that we have across the nation that need fucking homes. Yep. Exactly, but they don't want to do that because that that's that's, that's not too much work. that's too much work and that's not that's not good PR. Exactly. That, that, that Look at my little black baby from Cambodia. Isn't he adorable? We're gonna name him Russell. Okay? Yeah, and it's gonna be so great, and he's so, gonna have like yeah, this beautiful like, life, and he's gonna think that this he's going to think as a movie star, this is how the life is, and that yeah. here's again, it's it's such a catch twenty two because I just want people to have a life. Yep. Period. Like I want people who want life to happen and to raise that life correctly no matter what it is we've all watched the million videos all over youtube and twitter and facebook wherever it might be about the parents who have struggled to take care of their kids with cerebral palsy or or autism or a a mix of both or you know drug addicted babies and the shakes they have we've all seen it and we all get it and we all want to help but here's my thing if I don't want to make anybody's choice. I don't walk in anybody's. I don't walk in anybody's shoes. I may not ever win the Mother of the Year award, and I'm totally okay with that. Because at the end of the day, my kids may not. My kids are like awesome, and they're great, and I love them. And they're also little fucking dill holes that I have no idea how to handle some days, and I'm not sure if what I'm doing is harming them or bettering them. And I'll come to find out in about eight or nine years from now when they are grown adults, and we can have a serious conversation, sitting on our front porch over a cup of coffee, and like talk talking about their childhood and where my pros and my cons were because I'm very all about being honest and open. Like, if I suck as a parent, let me know. Like, not from you. I don't want to hear from you, by the way, because I don't raise you, okay? I want to hear from my kid's voice. And when I fail, I'm okay with that. It doesn't make me feel good. What I'm saying is, okay, like, where did I win and where did I lose? Because these are two kids who I never expected to have kids. I was told I wasn't going to have kids. Both of my kids are miracle babies. So we're going to put that out there. And I'm very grateful for that. But that was not a life that I was planning on having. And 
Um, and I was married and then I had kids, you know, it's a very weird thing nowadays and I'm not any better than anybody because of that decision. It just, that's how my cards got played. And if somebody is in a, a different circumstance than me, then they should have the right to choose in my, in my opinion, what they as a life human being on this earth it is their decision what's going to make them happy and if they're not going to be happy with a kid in their life okay they could give it up for adoption but you're still talking about nine months carrying this kid around not making the healthiest decisions because you're not going to see him so you don't really let's be real honest you don't actually have no matter how consciously you try you don't you know that baby that you are giving up is no longer your responsibility and that you could in the great human anatomy walk away from that and believe that it never happened you can make yourself believe that you never had kids so that's right and that is one of those things where like they could do as many drugs and drink as many as alcohol and screw up this kid as bad as they want and walk away from it and in some weird subconscious conscious way make themselves believe that that was never their problem because they knew they weren't going to keep the baby anyways. So that baby gets raised and gets tossed around from foster home to foster home. And let's be real honest, everybody knows, when you're in a foster home, your clothes get put into a garbage bag. You throw them in there, and then you go to another home. And maybe that person likes you enough to keep you. And maybe they put you in a pig cage and they leave you in a closet for hours on end. Or maybe they handcuff you to a toilet. Maybe they sell you to human sex trafficking. Yeah. So That's a big, big, big thing for me. So here's my bit of reality is that I don't know. Would it be better for that child to be alive in sex trafficking than it would for that child who had never been born at all. And if you can sit there on your pedestal and on your podium and tell me that 100% hands down, you think that that child should be kept alive and thrown into every which direction and screwed up to be a certain kind of person and you're okay with that, then, dude, kudos to you. Kudos to you because Good for I, you, you know, I could never do. I could never be the person to make that decision because I don't know what that decision or what those kind of substance could bring back to me. So, like, figure it out, folks. I'm really sorry. Kudos to every single single mother out there who went and had those babies and she's raising them on her own and she and she struggled and she's working several jobs and she's working an insane amount of hours and she's paying for... Like, dude, I love every single one of you single moms. Every single one of you. I don't care if you're from the fucking hood. I don't care if you're from fucking California. I don't care if you're from the hood in California. I don't give a shit where you're from. Kudos to you to every single woman who has put on her pants every day or her skirt or her fucking whatever the shit you feel like wearing that day and you have tried your damnedest because even if you suck at being a parent you were at least trying to suck less as a parent and right and, and all the rest of you who sit there and, and you and you you have the ability because your husband makes good money and he works at a great job because whatever reason that the cards played in your favor I'm so happy for you too I'm not against you I'm just saying like Dude, shut the fuck up. Right. This is not your life. And unless you're investing thousands of dollars into telling and raising everybody else's fucking babies, shut up. It's not your choice. This is not your life. And unless you're going to beat fucking opiate addictions, unless you're going to fucking beat alcoholism, unless you're going to fucking beat beating ladies, do stop. Like, you don't have a right to judge anybody. All right, I think I'm off my pedestal now. I think that was my... <laughs> did you did you get off your soapbox there? Damn. <laughs> Damn, bitch. Gosh, shut up. Thank you.